In this video, we're taking a look at the um, iodine clock reaction data analysis and graphs that we're going to create for this experiment in grade 12 chemistry. Um, I've posted a new data sheet like this on Edmodo. Um, it's a little bit different from the one that you used in your experiment, so you'll want to update, you want to print this and, and transfer your data to this sheet here. It's essentially the same, but it's a little bit better organized. So we were mixing solutions of potassium iodate with sodium bisulfite, and we were timing how long it took for a blue color to appear. This is the iodine clock reaction. The KiO3, potassium iodate, was labeled on the bottle 0 0.020 molarity. The sodium bisulfite was labeled originally as 0 0.0020 molarity. Now, when you did the experiment in the original um, data sheet, you were diluting the KiO3 uh, while keeping the sodium bisulfite constant. So you went from 10 mils on your, in your experiment down to 8 mils, and then down to 6 mils, down to 4 mils, and then I think you did 2 mils as well. But the 2 milliliter one didn't actually work. It, it took forever and we just stopped timing. That's because at that point the um, potassium iodate was limiting and the reaction therefore didn't, wouldn't have occurred if we had waited um, forever. Um, so what I've done here is I've done a few extra trials for you. I've added in 9 milliliters and seven and five. And so I want you to copy these times into your um, data table and add them to your data. So we were decreasing the volume of KiO3 while adding water to compensate for that. So in other words, we were diluting the KiO3 in each of the successive trials. However, in each trial, the total volume was kept at 20 milliliters. Now, we wanted to, so you've got times recorded already for uh, trial 1, the 10 milliliter, trial 3, the 8 milliliter, trial 5, 6, and trial 7, 4 milliliters of KiO3. So you want to copy your times into there and add mine. Now, the, we're going to need to calculate the concentrations of the two reactants after we mixed them. So in trial 1, we were mixing 10 mils of KiO3 with 10 mils of sodium bisulfite. And so we know that's a dilution. And so the dilution formula, C2, the concentration after diluting, is C1, the concentration before diluting, times the volume of that solution we're using, V1, and divided by the total volume after diluting, V2. So if we were to plug the numbers for trial 1 in, we could calculate the, the bisulfite concentration after we've mixed the solutions. It would be C1, so 0 0.0020 molarity, times V1, 10 milliliters, and divided by V2, which is the total volume, 20 milliliters. So if we do that, we should get 0 0.0010 molarity. Doing the same thing for the iodate in trial 1, its concentration was originally 0 0.020 molarity. We used 10 milliliters of it, and the total volume was still 20, so its concentration after dilution is 0 0.010 molarity. The bisulfite, we're not changing. We use 10 mils in every trial, and there was a total of 20 mils as well, so its concentration is not going to change. So you can just fill that number in all the way down the table. The iodate, though, we were diluting it, so its concentration will be changing. So if you take the second trial here with 9 milliliters of KiO3, this is the one you've added to your data, and so we plug in C1.020 times V1, 9 milliliters, and we divide by 20. We're now going to find that the concentration is, instead of 0.010, it's 0 0.0090 molarity. Okay? So you want to fill down these concentrations using the volumes of iodate and the dilution formula. Now the rate of the reaction, we said we would calculate it. This was described in the, in the lab on the front sheet of the lab handout. We were going to calculate it as the concentration of bisulfite over time, the change in bisulfite over change in time. However, because the bisulfite is being used up completely in the reaction, its change in concentration is simply its initial concentration. Its final concentration will be zero. 
So if we take the initial bisulfite concentrations in each trial and just divide them by the times required to react, we'll get the reaction rate. So for example, if we do that in trial one, um, sorry, with the uh, 21.2 seconds, my, my trial two, so I'll take 0 0.0010 molarity, which was the bisulfite concentration, 0 0.001, I'm going to divide that by the time, 21.2 seconds. My calculator shows me an answer, 4.7. I'm going to write it in scientific notation. 4.7 times 10 to the minus 5 molarity per second. So you're going to do the same thing. Take the bisulfite concentrations in every trial and divide them by the times to get the rate of reaction as change in bisulfite over change in time. We also performed trial 1, 10 mils and 10 mils, at four different temperatures. So up here we were doing it at room temperature. So we can go down to the table below and I'm going to record the room temperature. When I did it today I found it to be 20 degrees Celsius. You may have found a different temperature in, in, the, in the lab yesterday, but it should be close to 20 degrees. And I'm going to record my data for that. So when I did the experiment today, it took me 18.7 seconds. Your time will be a little bit different than that, but it should be probably similar. And because we are still using 10 mils of the bisulfite mixed to total 20 milliliters, its concentration is still the same as above, so 0 0.0010 molarity and we're going to calculate the rate in the same way. So a change in bisulfite divided by the time. So when I divide those two numbers, I get now a reaction rate of 5.3 times 10 to the minus 5. And again, express your rates in scientific notation like that. And you'll do that for four different temperatures. You should have had one trial in an ice bath and a temperature somewhere between 5 and 12 degrees Celsius. You, mine was 8 degrees today, but yours will be whatever you recorded in the lab. And then we used two water baths. One of them was at 27 degrees, one was at 35 degrees. You were supposed to record the temperature that was shown on the front of the water bath when you took your test tubes out of the water bath to mix them. So you might have 28, you might have 27.5. These were the temperatures that I had here for me. So we're going to have four different rates at four different temperatures. We're going to have seven different rates at seven different concentrations of iodate. You're going to take that data and you're going to create two graphs. So the first graph is going to be from the first part of the experiment and I'm calling it the effective temperature on the reaction rate for the iodine clock reaction. Oh, sorry, this is part two of the experiment. The effect of temperature. So I've got temperature on my x-axis, and since my temperatures went from about 8 degrees up to around 35 degrees, my scale I've just chosen from 0 up to 40 degrees Celsius. And then look at what I've done on the, on the y-axis. Plotting those points or making a scale with the scientific notation is actually pretty easy if you simply note that all of your rates in the data table had a times 10 to the minus 5 beside them. So I'm going to label this axis not just rate of reaction, but times 10 to the minus 5 molarity per second. The advantage of doing that is if I look back at that data point we had, so at 20 degrees Celsius, my rate was 5.3 times 10 to the minus 5. So I can go to my graph now, and I can take 20 degrees Celsius, and I can find 5.3, well, if this is 5 and this is 6, 5.3 would be right there. And that's 5.3 times 10 to the minus 5 molarity per second. Okay, so I'm going to plot my four points and see the effect of temperature on the reaction rate. Once you've plotted your points, put a line of best fit or a curve of best fit, whatever seems more appropriate to you, through the data. I also want to see on your graph a, some kind of a little paragraph or point form description from theory as to what the effective temperature on rate should be. Use collision theory, basically what we described in our notes, to describe, you can do it in point form, how temperature should affect the rate. All right, And hopefully the data, the graph that you've got, 
is, is in line with what the theory predicted. Okay? So I want some kind of brief point form description of what the effect of temperature should have been on the rate of reaction. And I want to see the language of collision theory, basically what we put down in our notes. From the first part of the experiment, we were examining the effect of changing the concentration of iodate on the reaction's rate for the iodine clock reaction. So my concentrations of iodate, if you look back at that table, they're ranging from, the, the very smallest one is going to be somewhere, oh, I don't have it in front of me now, but it's around uh, 4 times 10 to the minus, th uh, 4 times 10 to the minus 3, and then it goes up to 9 times 10 to the minus 3, and then this one here, I can think of it as 10 times 10 to the minus 3. So I can play that same little trick with scientific notation, and I can label the axis as concentration of iodate times 10 to the minus 3 molarity. My rates of reaction were all times 10 to the minus 5, so I'm going to do the same thing here, rate of reaction times 10 to the minus 5 molarity per second. And then when I plot those points, the first one here, this would be thought of as 9 times 10 to the minus 3 molarity, and the rate was 4.7 times 10 to the minus 5. So finding 9 times 10 to the minus 3 and 4.7 times 10 to the minus 5, I would be right around here. That would be my data point that we had just seen in the data table. Okay? So you want to create a graph like this that will show that seven different data points, your data plus mine, um, and it will, that's not the best, uh, I realize that's not the best thing to do to combine data, but uh, that's what we're going to do this year. Um, so you can have seven different data points, and again, put a line or a curve of best fit through the data. And on this graph, I want to see a point form description of how um, concentration should have affected the rate, again, based on what we described in our notes in collision theory. So in point form, tell me how, the con how diluting the concentration or how increasing the concentration of iodate should have affected the rate and explain why. All right? So I want those graphs with their explanations, and I want this data sheet so you can print it at home, or if you like, I'll have some copies in class on Monday, and you can fill it in then if you like. Um, I want um, the data sheet and the two graphs with the, with the explanations from theory on them handed in in class by the date that said on Edmodo. All right, I hope that helps. Enjoy.